Let's talk about um, composite functions. Composite functions are where you can literally put one function inside another. It's kind of like if you've ever seen the stacking dolls, those ru Russian stacking dolls, where you open one up and another one pops out of the inside. It's very, very similar to that idea. In order to do composite functions, we have to be given two different functions. In this case, we're given an f and then we're given a g. And so f is identified as, or defined as, the square root of x plus 1, and the g function is defined as 3x. First of all, they're telling us to do f of g of 4. Now you will know that this is a composite because of that little open circle. This kind of looks like fog, but that open circle is not an O, it actually means composite. So let me show you how I like to write these. I like to do a little bit different notation. I like to write it as the f of g of 4. To me, that's a little bit easier to be able to read it and see what's going on. And especially because um, this almost looks like grouping symbols. Like we're working, you know, we always work with grouping symbols from the inside to the outside. So this tells me that we're going to be doing the G of 4 first. Well, we've done things like that before. We've taken a function and evaluated it at this x value. So that says we're going to take this g function, which says 3 times the variable, and we're going to replace the variable with 4. So 3 times 4, of course, would be 12. That tells us that the g of 4 is actually 12. Now we can back back out and say, okay, now our notation is telling us to do the f of 12. So we would take the f function, which says the square root of the variable plus 1, and we're going to replace our variable here with 12, and then simplify. So this would be the square root of 13. Our final answer then, we're looking at that composition function is the square root of 13. Let's do part B. Part B says the g of f of 2. So I'm going to write it in my new notation. And that way I can do one part at a time. First of all, I'm going to work on the inside, which says to find the f of 2. Well, the f of 2 would be the f function evaluated for an x value of 2, replacing x with 2. So that would be the square root of 3. Now I know the f of 2 is really the square root of 3. Now I can do this, this uh, notation, what it tells me to do. This says to evaluate the g function for the square root of 3. So the g function, remember, said 3 times the variable. So 3 times our new variable is the square root of 3. Our final answer then is 3 square roots of 3. For the next one, we're supposed to do the f of f of 1. So again, I'm going to use my notation, which says the f of f of 1. So I'm going to evaluate the f function for a value of 1. Well, the f function said the square root of the variable plus 1. So that would be the square root of 2. I'm going to replace that now with the square root of 2. And now I'm going to evaluate the f function at the square root of 2. So that would be the square root of the variable plus 1. Now we really can't simplify that any further, at least not nicely. So we're going to leave that as is. For the last one, if you'll remember from back up here, we're supposed to do the g of g of 0. So the g of the g of 0. The g of 0, the inside piece, says to take 3 times the variable, which would be 0. Now the outside, again we're evaluating the g of 0, which was 3 times the variable which in this case is zero.